All right, so we got 10 video games that sucked in 2022. Let's get right to the video. 2022 was a pretty good year for gaming, but uh, there were some real stinkers. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 games that sucked in 2022. Starting yeah. off with number 10, it's Valkyrie Elysium for the PS5 with a 65 meta score. I don't, Square even, know, I don't Enix even know what that is. It's had a real. weird year. For every banger, like Triangle Strategy, you get like a Diofeld Chronicles. For every Tactics Ogre Reborn, you get a Babylon's Fall. And don't worry, we're going to get to that what one later. This? One of the more intriguing no games they put out was Valkyrie Elysium, an action game continuation of the Valkyrie bad. profile games from the PS1. as a while ago. Near Automata was the return of a really dormant franchise that Square Enix owned. So who's to say this couldn't be a big rebirth for another franchise, right? Okay. Uh, it wasn't, though. It's a simplistic action game where everything feels cheap, half-baked, and dull. Uh, thing is, combat's not too this bad, but there's the just life out not of this game. much other than that. Like, pretty much all you do is go through linear paths, fight enemies, pick up random collectibles, and watch cutscenes. Uh, it's not I mean, exactly a bad I mean, thing you could to probably any game, though. describe a lot of games that way, but here we're definitely you using boy, that as you a not negative. Put and, and if we're using this, that as say. negative, then, well, like okay, combat isn't gonna cut it. I said Ratchet. It's Ratchet, right? Ratchet and Cut. <laughs> There's also some pretty bizarre design decisions, like how elemental weaknesses work, which is too complicated Bro, to get sure into. Bro, I'm pretty sure it's Ratchet uh, and Clink. you're spending way ratchet too much time clink. looking at menus in what is supposed to be an action game. There's not really a whole lot to look at outside of menus either. The environments look stupid. empty and samey, and the enemies get repetitive really fast. There's nothing to escape okay. from the tedium. No I understand. Pieces, change up <laughs> he the doesn't gameplay. like this game. Just the same thing over and over. I mean, you can say the same thing about any other game, It's not though. the worst thing ever. You go around, but as a you pick up stuff, you fight enemies, you watch a cutscene. A lot of games really have feels half baked. But at number nine is Saints Row with a 61 meta score. Another big returning franchise. Another mm, rushing yeah, I didn't, I didn't play Saints Row. Now, this was one I was excited for, and I, I really wanted a new Saints Row game that was a Saints Row game as opposed to like a knockoff like Agents of Mayhem. But we got a pretty much paint by numbers reboot of the Saints Row series, and it wasn't bloated up with free to play. Oh Systems are bogged down Wait by a, a bunch of extra menus. It's just dull and very buggy. What game was like, it? Extremely buggy. That's kind of the biggest issue. Hold when on. the game first came out, it's a big mess. Even after months of patches, too, like it's sometimes barely playable. Like now, if you boot it up now, when you're starting this thing out, it can just feel like an endless series of glitches, both graphical and worse. One of the most annoying ones I What's the one was game? The constant weapon switch. Gotham bug, Knights. Where the game would switch over to an empty gun for some reason gotham like, knights do it i'm gonna be all real the damn time Stuff i didn't like, like gotham knights is constant, I, and, and that's still, the game that like i really now, want to play along with your everyday game breaking bugs messed up mission triggers forced to restart long sequences and all around just poor performance especially on the xbox series x for whatever reason get past all of that and you're left with a i guess serviceable but not exciting open world crime game people are really starting to turn on these buggy game releases this year and i think yeah. that that's good because it's just it's ridiculous. There's been too many high profile flops. Yeah, bro, that's ridiculous. More. And even though the game has improved somewhat, this is ridiculous. Launch, there's still at its finest bugs. And frankly, the game just isn't good enough to work around it. And who designed this character? And number eight is Gungrave Gore on the PS5 Gun who? with a 58 meta score. This inexplicable sequel to the Gungrave game. Oh, I don't know PS2 what this is. is. Shockingly authentic. This is like some off the Nintendo 64. Kind of <laughs> impressive how close the developers managed <laughs> let, to take let me stop. I'll play it. I'll play it. Hey, to the company that <laughs> improvements with you know the idea of the original done better but instead uh it just feels like a janky ps2 game so the maybe it would have been fine game, in the ps2 playing, era bro. but it's the, I like 20 joke years around. later I'm stupid. I'm goofy. and in the aesthetics of a cheap unity flip, I'm, I'm stupid, and you got whatever gore is supposed to be here's the thing <laughs> even those original games didn't review particularly well when they came out and <laughs> bro, even though i kind of have a soft bro. spot for the sequel gun grave overdose playing, it's bro. not a fantastic uh, game <laughs> Uh, still, hell of a lot better than this. Uh, the controls Man, are stiff, I'm shooting playing, is awkward, yo. and the levels are as basic as they get. It's literally just a bunch of linear corridors that enemies appear in, nothing to collect, no puzzles to solve, really nothing to do. You're just blasting, and while that might sound cool, it's not. 
The bosses aren't any better. They're just bullet sponges with a few attacks each. Cutscenes, dialogue, all oh atrocious. Seriously, they couldn't even get like a proofreader in here for some of this stuff. And the amount of grammatical errors in the first cutscene, the first thing that talks at you, it's kind of shocking. Like, there's a little bit of old school fun to be had with this game, but you gotta get past a lot of jank to get there. Actually, maybe less jank than the PS2 titles, which is, mm -hmm. a, a, again, kind of shocking. Yeah, this does look... Yeah, I don't... Bro, what is... How is he... And number seven yeah, is Dragon does. Ball, the Breakers with a 54 meta score on oh, the PS5. Okay. Uh, ever played Dead by Daylight or Friday yeah. the 13th and uh, thought, I hey, agree. you know, Dragon Ball would work this way. And I you love know, Dragon Ball's my favorite anime it, of all time. Uh, it's kind of a bizarre premise, yep. and I was really, really intrigued with it. Me too. In, actually. Like, it actually caught my eye, and I was thinking, this could be good. But no, just kind of another microtransaction-filled mess. How this yeah. thing works is instead of playing as like a Dragon Ball guy like Goku or Vegeta, you're just a weakling who has to escape from the various Literally. Dragon Ball bad guys. Which again, interesting idea, but execution is yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those aren't words, but uh, I agree. You know, if I'm being honest, I, I the agree. The controls I really are like, floaty um, and unresponsive. This. The camera is a huge. And I was mess. expecting um, a lot coming from this, feels bro. Feels satisfying. I was hyping this game up. Controlling your character is a chore in this game. In and my head, that's kind of a problem. You know. A competitive multiplayer game? Dragon Ball Kakarot was something different. Dragon Ball Kakarot was it's amazing. It's not free to play either. It costs money up front. You'd never yeah. know it from looking at the microtransactions, which would be like bad even if the game was completely free. Like, if you gotta give it something, it's one of the most unique games of the year, especially when it comes to the Dragon Ball games. But unfortunately, it just sucks. And number six is Hello Neighbor 2 with a 54 meta score. I thought that was a mobile game. The whole Hello like, Neighbor franchise I thought that was like a mobile game. Because it's like a great idea with some pretty interesting visuals, but the developers just can't seem to figure out how to pull it all together, you know? They need that rug that the Big Lebowski was looking for, and they haven't found it yet. The first game didn't review well, and this game is basically more of the same. You'd think they'd take this opportunity what is, like, what to like, is find it? the fun and make Hello Neighbor 2 a great game, but it's yeah. That they kind of double down on the same asinine design decisions they made in the first one. That's not to say there aren't a few improvements. The game is still basically just a puzzle solving game with the fun twist that you sometimes randomly get caught trying to solve a puzzle and are forced to start over. The puzzles are a what? little more intuitive this time around, but there's still ridiculous stuff like removing a cobweb using a pair of scissors. Like, just use your hands. The stalkers just feel sure. random most of the time, and it makes the puzzle solving part feel more like a chore it's not scary uh it's frustrating and also it's pretty buggy all this to say it misses the mark by a long shot and number five is dolman with a 54 meta dolman you see you can't have a list like this without at least one really disappointing why is he in a room full of, like, full of like, eggs it's required whoa uh, what dolman, is this uh, basically everything you could want in a whoa spiders team, awkward cuts what is this oh no 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 no, no, no. walk away walk enemies, away now everything bro. looks like it's coated with a thick layer of vaseline because yeah sure <laughs> all right anyone looking for like an interesting sci-fi twist on this genre is in for immediate disappointment because this game is not interesting i mean it is a sci-fi twist but it's not interesting oh, no. it's not fun I don't like bugs, it's barely bro. playable oh, no. like look at your hub it's Ooh. like this environment that look how fast built for he's moving in any way shape or look form. how fast i don't that bug think is moving. i've ever seen a game with ceilings this low it's so weird like cheap apartments aren't even this bad the plot's a whole bunch of who cares it's your standard gobbledygook with a slight sci-fi twist uh exploration is disappointing combat never feels right it's just janky and honestly a miserable experience i don't even Man, want to call the bosses these things are simultaneously pathetic and infuriating and it's not in a good way they got boy a ton you're of fighting and oversized bugs you while it seems like a quarter of your attacks don't even connect games don't get much worse than high difficulty combined with intolerable jank uh, the mantula it's those and number four is Babylon's Fall with a 46 Babylon. meta score on PC. You knew we'd get here. Like, this is probably one of the ones before. that everybody thought of when they saw it. The yeah, I've definitely have seen this video. before. Babylon's Fall is one of the biggest flops of the year. Published by Square Enix, developed by I know, Platinum I know Games, that company. Should have been great, but it's not. In fact, great is about as far from what it is as possible. It is terrible. And do you know what? You can explain it so simply. Four words. Games as a service. This is an online-only cooperative action game 
made by a developer that has no idea what to do with that and also apparently got next to no funding to make it. I honestly don't know really? what anyone was thinking with this one. Right from the first trailer, I've never even like, heard this, this game this doesn't look this good. Year. It's I'm a platinum honest. game, so like there's some decent things about it, like the combat system, which allegedly this game was designed with the idea of improving on the near automata combat system. But even though it's mm. probably the best part of the game, it's weak compared to literally every other game they've ever made. And that includes the cheap ass Activision Legend of Korra games. <laughs> like everything sucks. The story is told through slideshows like it's 2008. And this came from like the Xbox arcade indie section, which would be fine if it was like, you know, an indie game, but it's not. It's also covered with this weird filter that's meant to make it look like an oil painting. Thing, uh, but that is not what it does. Bro, he's really it actually roasting emphasizes these games, how cheap everything is by trying to hide it. And like Comment a lot below, of other, if games you guys ever played games, uh, any of these games, that's on the list to be right as now. Competitive as it possibly can. It's got all the annoying hooks like daily rewards, time limited activities that keep you playing. But the levels are so basic, and the gear is so underwhelming. There's just nothing to keep anyone playing for an extended period of time. Babylon's Fall is a massive failure by any metric, and it's all the more shocking that a developer that's usually so good made. It. Yeah, like, I've never heard of Babylon's Fall, bro. I, I don't think I'll be that real. they did. I think that maybe at some point they wanted it to be good, and it just wasn't. It doesn't really matter what the intention was either. All that matters is that the end game just sucks. And number right, three is Zell for PC with a 46 meta score. Zell. It's one of those indie games that when you first see it, I've you never think seen it might be before. an overlooked treasure or a gem in the rough. Visuals actually look pretty nice in screenshots, and the concept of a sci-fi Ooh, themed okay. Legend of Zelda, you know, pretty appealing, honestly. Final it's product, like though, be on a Switch, uh, right? It's not there. The game is a mess, just bugs, really? uh, like to the point where you're as likely to fall through the floor as you are to actually beat an enemy you're attacking. Trying to do anything is a chore in this game. Using ladders, switches, uh, it's all a crapshoot. Uh, and where the game wants you to be in the exact right pixel to do anything, even then, it sometimes yeah, doesn't register for yeah. whatever reason. Combat is just as awkward. It's got wonky hitboxes all over the place. The save system's a pain. It's just not fun to play mm. this game right now. It's an indie game, so there's a lot of room for the developer. Yeah, I'm gonna say it, it, this doesn't like a game, game that can it like is not as good as it needs to be. This doesn't. Yeah. At number I two be too is Crossfire with X with a 38 meta Crossfire. score on Xbox. This game Wait is a minute. weird one. You got totally disparate parts, two of them. I've heard of this game. A miserable multiplayer experience and an actually not too bad. I thought this setup, game was trending on uh, the campaigns on YouTube. Made by Remedy of all people are are genuinely not terrible. They're not great, but they work and they're fairly fun if a little short. That said, the multiplayer stuff is bottom of the barrel. It's bare bones. It's boring and not engaging. It doesn't help that it tries to be like hardcore by having no respawns. So expect to do a whole lot of waiting around, wondering what you're going to do with your life. Um, that's Wait. like a feature in the game. Uh, these Wait. days, you don't see too many blatant COD copycats it, like this. So it's almost a little nostalgic. That, oh you just my don't God. get that many dull, gray, paint-by-numbers FPS games anymore. So that almost makes this a novelty, but it's too far from this good. This is multiplayer? If you want to check this one out for a laugh, load up the campaign. Uh, it's generic, but it gets the job done. But stay away from the multiplayer. This is and finally at number one, Gotham Postal Knights. Four. No regrets with a thirty oh, no, meta score. <laughs> Seriously, no regrets. That's the joke they put. <laughs> Maybe I was just hating, it, bro. Maybe I was just hating. I thought he was saying Gotham ago, Knights. But, uh, it's not ten years ago. It's now. What is this game and, called? And, I mean, I kind of Postal Four. No, game, no regrets. It's lame. Even if you're into the humor, the whole thing is buggy and just not fun. It barely manages to meet the basic requirements of even being a game. It's not fun to play. The jokes are lame a lot of the time, and it's just all around crappy. I barely what? even want to talk about it. It's like, what is there to say? Like, look at this crap. It's like if Goat Simulator was meant to be a real game and not Goat Simulator. But that's it. But it's actually like Bro. much worse because that still almost sounds fun. Boy, this is like that. This is like something that will be on Game X. XL. It's so much better. Do you guys remember nine crap. years ago playing today. Games Please XL? Comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. This not cool map. Oh so my god! We have god. brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see. Shout out to this guy, uh, gamer, game, gamer Annex, gamer Annex, gamer X, gamer Annex. Ooh, hopefully I said that right. If I said, if, if listen, if I butchered it, bro, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, bro. So these were the worst games. Sorry, not worst games. These games sucked in 20. 22 hopefully um we, we, we already know actually no this guy's actually funny 
It's going to be a list for 2023. Let's be real. <laughs> it's probably one for 2021, 2020, 2019, et cetera. I should watch those, you know, uh, after I'm done recording my videos. But other than that, um, a lot of these games I haven't heard of before. I'll be real. Comment down below if you guys have heard of these games. And, you know, because let's be real. Everybody has, like, different uh, different experiences when it comes to, like, playing uh, different games and stuff like that. So, like, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I haven't heard of most of these games. I've heard of, like, two or three. I haven't heard of most of these games. So, um, it, yeah. Other than that, man, comment down below uh, what you guys thought about the video. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video if you guys like my reaction to this. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later for the next one. I'm out. And...